Well, this is a beauty. This is one of the first Iron Man broccoli heads of the season and uh, it has to be about seven or eight inch in diameter. It's a beautiful head of broccoli. And I'm going to take this home now for Sunday lunch. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's a balmy 25 degrees down on the allotment. It's Thursday afternoon and there's a job I've been wanting to do all week, but it's been overcast and raining. But at last the weather looks like it's going to be nice for a couple of days. So uh, I'm going to lift the onions. So stay with me. And don't they look grand? The onions in front of us here are the uh, long shallots. They've all fallen over and then the next two rows are the Rose de Roscoff, the Kerneval Pinks. And you can see the skins on these now are a beautiful golden brown. And uh, all the tops have fallen over, so it's high time that we lift them. I'm going to lift one or two of the bigger ones, and we can have a look at just how nice they are. And then I'll lift the rest of that row. The plan this afternoon is to at least get up the shallots and the Kerneval Pink and then I may come tomorrow and lift the uh, remainder of the onions. So let's get started. Well, that's not bad, is it? That's a beauty. The roots are moist, but it came away from the ground without much uh, effort, really. And as you can see, the roots aren't massive, are they? But uh, it's nice and firm. Altogether a really nice onion. I will weigh these when I take them home. I might pick two out, cut the necks, cut them off at the neck, and we'll eat them more or less straight away. But that'll give me an opportunity to uh, weigh the bulb of the biggest two onions. So that's the first one. Now, just before I lift the rest of the Carnival Pinks, I will just show you the other onions. And you can see, actually, these have done really well too, and they've caught up. The Red Fen has done really well. Nice and firm. Good size. Still upright, the tops, but they're going to get lifted, as I say, maybe tomorrow. And then we've got the Rumba, these are still upright as well, but the early fen, the ones on the left here, as you can see, the tops have all fallen over. And these really have probably gone past uh, the point at which they should have been harvested, because as you can see, one or two have started to split. But uh, any that have been split will be eaten first, they'll be separated out. But again, a good size, although a mixture of sizes. Some small ones some large ones, you'll have to excuse my shadow and some of the rumba are really quite large as well so but for now it's time to lift the remainder of the Kerneval Pink and also the Longosha lots so I'll do that now, we'll get them laid out to dry and then we'll take a look at them And here they are. I'm really pleased with the Caraval Pinks again. I think this is the third or the fourth year where they've uh, done us proud. 40 onions there. One or two are a little bit on the soft side. So this is a, a warts and all uh, review, if you will. Um, most, the vast majority are firm. One or two are a little bit soft. So I'll separate those out and we'll use those first. But if you look over to the left, you'll see there are eight onions there at the side of the path and they had started to go soft on the base and the ground although it looks dry on the surface is actually really wet underneath and this last couple of months has been very wet I think all over the country but it, it definitely has been here um, I've not done any watering outside for the last two and a half months 
really really wet and persistently so um, and you can see now although it's 10 minutes since I, I lifted them that the soil on the base of the onions is dark and wet so uh, I'm going to leave them here for maybe the next 24 hours till this time tomorrow it's going to be a really hot day tomorrow um, but these do look quite uh, damp on the base so they'll have the remainder of the day today so it's five o'clock now and then the first half of the day tomorrow and then they'll be turned upside down popped in the barn um, if the weather stays dry I may bring them back outside um, and then the shallots they look great as well these are all really solid I don't think there'll be any problem storing these these will last quite a long time don't know how many there are but probably 100 150 or something like that and uh, yeah just move around and take a closer look the Kerrival pinks possibly should have been lifted maybe a week earlier but the weather's just not permitted me to do that I needed to take them up so that they could uh, rest and dry off for a, a day or two so um, here we are they are what they are and you make the best of what you've got as I say probably 36 of the 40 are really solid like this one here you can see I'm pressing it it's rock hard um, one or two are a little bit soft there's a little bit of give when you press them like you can see there's one there I think that might be one of them um, but uh, I've still got time and I think I may given the uh, results of uh, lifting the caravel pinks and having found a few that are a little bit soft I may lift the others as well so that these have got plenty of time to dry so I'll get on with that now um, if I get it done I'll uh, I'll revisit the, the bed and we can have a look at the whole bed covered in onions. Alright, catch you later. And that's the onion bed done for 2020. And uh, we've got more than enough to keep us going, but I think we're going to have to grade the onions. We're going to have to store medium term to long term the really solid ones. And uh, the ones that are a little bit softer, they're going to have to be eaten first. Because if past experience tells me anything, it's that if your onions aren't really quite solid and perfectly dry with dry necks, then they, they won't store very well. And I'm guessing that about a third of these onions won't store very well because they're a little bit on the soft side. And some of the whiter onions as well that had fallen over, I think they were the early fen, as I went to pick them up, the neck of the onions were really quite wet um, and they weren't um, fungal or anything like that but they were soft and the leaf material was actually breaking down so they were far too wet they've, been, they've just not had the opportunity to dry out because we might have had a couple of days that were overcast a little bit of sun but then it's rained again um, and as I say the soil surface looks dry but underneath it's really really wet and if we look to the path you'll see we've got the eight caravel pink that were beginning to rot from the base then we've got three of the red fen that uh, were going soft they weren't rotting or anything but they were soft and then i've got six of the other two varieties rumba and early fen and it, it tends to be the smaller onions um, that uh, go soft um, Clearly they're ready to be lifted, they've reached their uh, optimum size, they're not going to grow anymore and they just sit there and just get soft. But uh, it's quite a sight, I have to admit. And the thing that, the, the onion that's uh, surprised me the most is the, the red fen. And I really am pleasantly surprised by the red fen. I didn't give them much heed during the growing season. You could barely see them because they're kind of disguised and match the, the soil colour. But they're a beautiful purpley deep red onion really stunning really really uh, got some deep colour to them and I hope that's reflected through the the flesh as well none of these have gone to seed none of the uh, red fen and for that matter none of the rumba or the early fen they were all heat treated 
uh, sets but uh, you still do sometimes get some go to seed but none uh, in this instance so uh, the shallots are a good size if I pick them up they vary in size from quite large to a couple that are quite small and there are lots of them rock solid the caravel pinks fabulous size the red fen they're a good size as well as are the rumba the early fen are a little bit smaller got a little bit more uh, green to them but if you look at the necks you can see what I mean how uh, they're soft and uh, quite to the touch like this one it's a little bit wet so um, we'll give them 24 hours to dry if uh, the forecast is for dry weather on Saturday I might leave them through tomorrow Friday and into Saturday I might leave them out here um, just let them thoroughly dry out but they're quite a spectacle aren't they I'm really pleased with them great season for onions if a little bit on the wet side but uh, we're going to be eating onions uh, full on <laughs> for the next two or three months uh, we'll get through the ones that are a little bit soft and then hopefully the rest will keep but um, when you've got this number of onions you do have to check them regularly you can't just rest on your laurels and think oh they'll be okay so uh, yeah they need sorting periodically and the soft ones taken out but that's uh, my onions for 2020 great season great harvest well while the onions have a well-deserved rest up on the second allotment we've come down to the third allotment to take a look at the dwarf French beans. Now the lack of sun over the last month or so has held a few things back. The tomatoes for one have been slow to ripen and uh, the beans have been slow to come into flower. It's looked like they were about to flower uh, over the last 10 days, two weeks um, and as you look at them now you can see many of the plants have still to open the flowers but if we take a closer look you'll see that we've got some beans and uh, I'll take one off shall I that's the first one first bean of 2020 this is the Stanley, it's got the uh, AGM Award of Merit, really reliable. I think we've got four flat bottom drills of these. Now in front of me, it just looks like a, a little bit of a jungle, but we have actually got two short drills here. This bed is nine foot wide and uh, we must have had a few non-starter bean seed here in this area so this one's only about eight eight feet but they're about three feet wide each drill and they've just about covered the bottom half of this bed the bed's about 25 feet long but there's a, a compost bin at the top the top half has got the sweet corn and as you can see the uh, silks are turning a nice brown I've not checked those yet we'll leave that for another update but the dwarf beans are ready for the first picking and uh, just show you again a really nice size I did check them yesterday and they were tiny they were half this size and uh, overnight a little bit of Sun and uh, they grow really that quickly just to my left you'll see where the uh, cabbage white butterfly is dancing around we've got the Borlotto dwarf bean I've not spotted any beans on that one yet but I will take a look um, but for now we're joined by the butterfly again and uh, we're going to pick some beans
Well, that's the first pick of beans on our allotment this year and uh, it's not a bad start. It'll be three or four days before the majority of the plants are uh, hanging heavy with uh, large beans like these. But for now, these are just, just what we needed. Um, it's nice every uh, few weeks when something new comes online and you get to sample a different vegetable and uh, this is one of my favourite. The dwarf French bean, Stanley. Really, really sweet, nicely tasting uh, bean. So, uh, and if I'm quick, I might just get home in time for tea. Catch you later. Well that's just about it for this update. I think there's been enough uh, excitement for one day on the plot but before I go I just wanted to uh, give you a brief update on the beefsteak tomatoes and we're looking at a pink brandy wine and I suspect this is a, a solid two pounder. It's looking really nice and if we just turn over to the right we'll see that a couple of the German Johnson are starting to colour up and around the corner we've got a Paul Robeson starting to look lovely lovely deep green shoulders but starting to uh, bronze up a little bit on the body of the tomato and then the start of the show this fused pink brandy wine and I'm putting my hand underneath the tomato to give you some sense of scale this is two large fused tomatoes. Each tomato on its own probably would have been about a pound and a half. Um, and I'm hoping that we're going to be in the region of about two and a half pounds. Thursday today, with a bit of luck, by Saturday or Sunday, this will have coloured up completely. We'll then be doing the pressure test to see if there's any give in the tomato. And if there is, it'll be being uh, taken home and uh, weighed. So, that's it for this update. Thank you very much for watching and for subscribing. Hope you enjoyed seeing the onions being lifted and uh, I'll leave you with uh, a parting shot of this beautiful pink brandy wine beefsteak tomato. All the best.